There's something really interesting happening in the evolution of high-resolution panoramas, and it's coming from a company called Gigapan. Today, we're going to talk about their flagship device, the Gigapan Epic Pro. One of the benefits of modern digital cameras and software is that creating panoramas is getting easier all the time. From in-camera processing to stitching in Photoshop after the fact, there are several ways to capture impressive panoramas. One of the things most panoramas have in common, though, is that they're usually taken handheld. And since the software that stitches images is so good, panoramas with smooth image blending are becoming more and more common. But imagine if you were somewhere with lots of detail, like the Grand Canyon or a sports stadium. And imagine if you could zoom all the way in with a high quality 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter lens attached to a high resolution camera. There are a few problems you'd have trying to make a panorama that way though. First, you'd need to take dozens if not hundreds of shots, aligned and in order, so that you could stitch them together after the fact. Talk about tedious. Second, you'd need some serious image processing software to hold a couple of hundred 18 megapixel images and blend them all together. And third, you'd need some powerful hardware and software to display the finished image at full resolution. Well, there's a solution to this kind of challenge, and it's a combination of a special intelligent camera holding robot and some amazing post-processing software. And both the invention and the company that makes it are called Gigapan. Before we get into the specs and setup of the Gigapan unit, I'd like to introduce you to a guy who has really jumped into the Gigapan technology with both feet. David Bergman has taken quite a few iconic Gigapan images from the presidential inauguration to the Olympic Games using the Gigapan. He even uses the Gigapan in his current gig as the tour photographer for Bon Jovi. Please welcome David Bergman. Hey David, welcome to the B&H set. Hey Larry, great to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Now, you've been using the Gigapan for a while. How did you get into this? Yeah, the first time I ever used it was at a little event you might have heard of it. It was President Obama's inauguration. That's like a famous Gigapan now. Yeah, it went kind of crazy. I had never used the Gigapan before that, and I just tried it for the first time at that event, and it, last time I checked it had 20 million views. It sounds like that's almost a testimonial, but how did this come about? Right, so I wanted to document the inauguration. I was already going as a traditional still photographer, and I wanted to document it uh, in a way nobody had ever seen. I knew there were going to be two million people there, so I figured that was the story to me, more than the fact that Obama was being inaugurated. So I did a bunch of research and, f and came across the Gigapan and figured it might be a good way to, to try to show the crowd in as much detail as possible. So I actually got a loaner unit from Gigapan. I had never used it until the night before, and I took it out of the box, read the instructions, and uh, brought it with me the next day, shot my traditional photos, and then at the same time ran the Gigapan unit and just let it do its thing. And that night at the end of the day, I, I, I just looked at the images and said, oh, this actually looks pretty cool. And I uploaded it to my website, and it went nuts. And it's, it's actually on the Gigapan website as well, and I've seen it there. It's amazing, the detail, and, and that you can zoom in. So uh, that's incredible. Now, have you ever tried to accomplish something like that before the Gigapan? I had never done something quite like that. I, I had shot, you know, traditional three or four or five shot panoramas just, you know, handheld, but I had never used a device that would actually assist me in that process. It's actually become sort of a staple of my, my business now because I've gone on to do Gigapans for clients like Major League Baseball and Sports Illustrated and NBC. I've done them now at the World Series, the Super Bowl, the Olympics, the Final Four, wow. NBA Finals, and uh, even did a few with uh, Bon Jovi at, a, at a big concerts. Yeah, and you're their, their uh, road photographer now. That's I am. Cool. Yeah, I'm the tour photographer, so that was nice to, uh, to kind of add the Gigapan in there. Now, I've actually seen some of these shots, and in fact, my buddy Scott Kelby has um, was featured in or in one of those crowd <laughs> shots. It's amazing the detail. Have you had response from people that you've taken pictures of in big crowds? Sure, yeah, I get emails all the time from people who found themselves. I mean, that's really what the technology is about, is allowing people to, uh, you know, remember an event they were at and then really prove that they were there. You know, there's that phenomena of, some event and, and, and it holds 100,000 people and 3 million people say that they were there, right? Well, now you can actually prove that you were there. There's a picture of it and you can zoom in and you can show your, your kids and for generations. The Gigapan is a multifaceted thing and there are multiple Gigapans out there now. And I've shot a couple of Gigapans. I'm starting to get my feet wet with it. Um, 
what kinds of things have you done to improve from your original GigaPan where you just set it up and let it go? Now what do you do? Right. Well, now, uh, you know, they, make, they do make a few different models, and I use the big model now that takes the big cameras. So I'm using big professional lenses, big cameras, instead of the point-and-shoot that I used the first time at the inauguration. And uh, I've also developed some techniques over years of experience on uh, how to make the picture so it's a little more seamless and I don't have as many, there aren't as many stitching errors in there, and also little things like if I shoot uh, the World Series, I don't want a player at bat and the same player also in the dugout. So I'll shoot every frame manually as I go, for example. Okay, explain what you mean by that. Yeah, so the GigaPan, basically, you set up the parameters on how you want it to shoot, and you shoot, it, it shoots a grid, so you might do 20 across by 10 down, mm -hmm. right? And, and you'll shoot 200 images, right? So if you can just set it on auto and the, and the GigaPen will communicate with the camera and actually take the picture and then move to the next uh, frame, next square, and take the picture and then move automatically. I don't really like to do that because you, you never really know what you're going to get. Right. That works great for landscapes or something that aren't really moving. But when you've got people that are moving around, you have to pay a little bit more attention. So there's a setting in there where you can put the GigaPen on manual. And basically, I have a cable release connected to the camera. I start at the first frame, I shoot the picture when I know it's ready, it's in focus, everything looks good. Then you hit the button on the GigaPan, it moves to the next frame, sure. and then I hit the button. So I'm every frame I'm composing the image, and it takes a lot longer, it's a bit tedious. I was going to ask you, because <laughs> I, I did 218 shots last night, yeah. and it took 16 minutes? Yeah. How long does it take you to do a I've shot? I've done like some. That? I mean, I've done it. I did one at the Olympics at the uh, soccer, uh, women's soccer, gold medal soccer game, and it was 675 images or something wow. like that. And it took about an hour. I'm just curious, what <laughs> kinds of things would you tell somebody that's just gotten into this and, and they set up and they do the, the automatic basic stuff, which is what I've done? What is kind of the next step? What kinds of things do you look for, and, and how would you suggest that somebody grow? in uh, using it? Well, I mean, you know, like any photography, you just got to go out and shoot, right? Because as you go, you learn the type of photography that you're doing and what you need to do. So if you're just doing landscapes, you might develop some uh, almost HDR techniques or um, where, you know, gradation techniques where as you move up in a picture, you might change your exposure slowly. So maybe the sky starts to darken as you, as you go up. Interesting. It's tricky because you don't want to actually see the squares. You want to be careful about how you do it and make it very gradual. Right. But for example, those are some tricks that you can do to spice up your image a little bit than just doing the standard straight picture. David, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for stopping by Thanks, and Larry. sharing some of your uh, insight from creating these famous GigaPan images. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me. Now let's head over to the review desk so we can go over more of the specifics of the GigaPan Epic Pro. Well, following that interview, you probably have a good idea what the GigaPan technology can help you do. But let's look a little more at the gear. The model I used is this, the Epic Pro. It's the largest GigaPan device available, and it's designed to hold heavier gear, like a full-frame camera paired with a large 70 to 200, 2.8, or maybe something even larger. The setup is basically to clamp your camera in place, attach the remote trigger cable, and use the LCD interface to tell the GigaPan about both your camera and define the panorama that you want to shoot. And then you tell the GigaPan to move your camera for you while it also triggers the shutter in order to capture each frame. Wow, that's a lot. But once I put it on my tripod, I was surprised how quickly I was able to set it up and take my first panorama. And really, I appreciated how the GigaPan screen reminded me of all those little things that I should double check before I press the OK button to begin the automated process of capturing my images. I was thinking that it was going to be complicated to set up the camera, but it was surprisingly easy. First, before you tell the GigaPan about the width and height of your intended panorama, you need to tell it a little bit more about your lens. It asks you to line up the top of your frame with the horizon, then you line up the bottom with the horizon. That's a pretty quick and clever way to help the GigaPan understand how big your image frame is. Next, you tell the GigaPan that you want to shoot a new panorama, and it asks you to point the camera at the top left of the intended panorama area. It helps if you put your camera in live view mode for this next phase. Using the arrow buttons, you point the camera where it needs to go and press OK. Then it asks you to point to the bottom right. You move it there and press OK again, and that's just about it. By the way, there's a 360-degree panorama option where you can shoot in the round. 
What happened next was really one pleasant surprise after another. As I was setting up the position for my final shot, the LCD displayed a screen that showed me how many shots and how many rows and how much time would be needed to capture my intended pano. That was really cool. Next, it asked me if I wanted to review the intended pano before capturing it. This is a great feature because before you start the process of capturing, you can review the range of the panorama sweep to make sure that you're getting the intended panorama image you want. Next, the Gigapan asked me several questions that were incredibly helpful. That's because there's a lot to consider when you're shooting a giant panorama, like forgetting to snug the camera's mount, or lock the exposure, or lock the white balance. These questions will help save you time and avoid making mistakes. Since I followed these prompts, even my very first Gigapan panorama was a success. Then I just pressed OK, and the Gigapan did all the pointing and shutter clicking work for me. The only exception to this was when somebody walked into my panorama in progress. I pressed the X button to pause it during the shoot, and I let somebody walk by. The great thing is that when you pause, the Gigapan reshoots that same frame one more time when you restart. So, if you accidentally shoot somebody walking into a frame, you can press pause. You get a clean frame when you start back up. Then during the stitching process, it's really easy to see the extra images and you just pull those out of the mix. The other end of the Gigapan experience is the stitching, where you put all the images together in a single panorama that can be displayed on your computer screen or on the web and it has amazing detail as you zoom into any given spot in your image. Each Gigapan device purchase includes a free downloadable copy of their stitching software to help you create and upload multi-image panoramas. Using my MacBook Pro, I was able to easily stitch together a 218 image panorama in around seven or eight minutes, most of which was just automated computer processing time. Then, from the same stitching software interface, I uploaded to a free account on the Gigapan website. From there, I was able to share it with people and they could view it from any web browser on any device. Very cool. And since Gigapan now offers printing services, you can even experience your favorite panoramas offline. Again, as David Bergman mentioned, there are quite a few advanced settings that will allow you to learn and perfect even more impressive panoramas over time. But if you can capture one of the most iconic panoramas in history, the inauguration, with a point-and-shoot camera on a Gigapan with little to no preparation. This device is obviously for new and advanced photographers alike. Three options are available based on the size of the camera. These roughly correspond to point-and-shoots, mirrorless cameras and some smaller DSLR lens combos, and finally, full-size DSLRs with long lenses. Look around the galleries of images on the Gigapan website, and if you're impressed by what you see, then consider getting your very own Gigapan and see what you can do with all that resolution. A special thanks again to David Bergman for his insights and his tips. If you'd like to know more about David Bergman, check out his website at davidbergman.net. For Kelby Training and B&H, with the Gigapan Epic Pro, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.